He has not given you over to sickness. He has not given you over to death. He has not given you over to turmoil. He has not given you over to fear. He has not given you over to witchcraft and Satanism. He has not given you over to bondage. You will not give it to glory to another. Good day, beloved, and thank you for joining me again today on Preach Your Voice, Not an Echo. Again, for those of you who do not know me, I'm Apostle Chantrell Davis. I have been on a marathon again today. I mean, I was going to do even more. I mean, that last message was an hour and 35 minutes, and y'all don't want to miss that message. I, I'm, I'm going to uh, leave it as one whole, but I'm probably going to chop or cut it in half, like 65 or 65 uh, for later, but I'm going to load it up in its entirety because I've, I've learned that those who want to eat, going to eat. Just like you will not leave a plate half full, you're going to want to eat. These words that are coming forth, I can no longer hold back. I can no longer backtrack. We have to move forward. Anyone who wants to go on the word, all they have to do is read the Bible and pray and listen to the Father. And I have created playlists with everything. And you can literally go on a marathon. And you would not believe how much you will learn, how much will get stripped out of you, how much you will grow. If you not only listen, but you hearken and go before the Father on every message I've delivered on Preach Bill Voice by the Echo Ministry. But the Lord told me he would keep me in a constant state of what he is doing and what he is saying. What his heart is. The word that is needed that you are positioned, so to speak, to receive what he has for you. That you can grow there by starting off on the sincere milk. That you may grow up strong and robust in the word. That these words that uh, and the word uh, that is ministered to you. That will go forth as a seed. But it will grow forth in your heart as food. And that food will remain. And you will grow up into what the Lord has called you into going to. Because we are moving in a different time. The way they did when they had to, you know, they traveled by ships or whatever they did to get to and go to these churches. You visit when you can. But we are moving into a more modern day. Which is how the gospel was going to be preached worldwide, not just physically, but even through the medias, because they have their purposes, even though they're starting to block. And so I would really behoove you. I'm telling you, because the Lord is putting more and more upon me. And these words are uh, when you deliver in light, you attract forces that want to block that light. They can't, they can't block the light. The light is God, and the light came forth from God. And the light was Christ. And that light is now in you because you're in him. And the darkness could not overcome that light. And likewise, the light that is in you of Christ. Not that darkness lighting you to be darkness. The light that is Christ. What are you plugged into? The darkness will not overcome that light either. For it is the same light that came forth from the Father of lights. And the darkness cannot comprehend it. And the darkness cannot overcome it. So you shine. Because he said you will grow brighter and brighter until you reach the full light of day. Excuse me, let me pause. I'm coughing. Okay. But like I was saying, the light that came forth from the Father, the dark, darkness cannot overcome it. And likewise, you have to move. Because the Lord said you don't have to do anything. I'm not going to do anything to draw people to the ministry. Those who are assigned to this voice in the earth is going to come. And the Lord will grow me as he sees fit. Because again, the Lord said that this ministry is prominent, not popular. And that's all that matters to me. Is the Lord is active and has enacted in and through me. And that this ministry of Preach Bill Voice the Echo ministry is his. And of course, I want to raise up people who can be extensions of Preach Bill Voice the Echo. And that will be led into uh, the helpers that will come forth. But the Lord said that they will be drawn to the brightness of your rising. You will rise as you get brighter and brighter. So people will be drawn in to Christ through you as he moves through you by the brightness of your rising. I'm telling you the kind of stuff you're going to have to face. People that are going to misunderstand you. They're going to judge you wrongly. They're going to presume against you. Even people he used to speak through you. And you have got to stand. Keep your integrity be faithful. Be true inwardly and outwardly. 
Stay in a state of repentance. And let the Lord continue to deliver you. When the Lord can just point stuff out to you, you'll be like, oh, dear God, oh, I'm to repent. You don't need anybody that's telling you that. Because the Lord knows what he's doing with you over here. But the moment he put his finger on something, you'll be like, oh, God. Stay in that posture. Because there's many people on their face, but they're standing in their heart because they think they're better. And there's many people that's on their, uh, uh, standing up, and in their heart, they are totally prostrate. Because they know who they rely on. You rely on the Spirit of God. And you stand by faith alone. As I've told you before, I and other ministers are only helpers of your joy. Don't let nobody make you think they got your destiny is in their hand. The Lord specifically told me, I would not leave your destiny in the hands of another. Because there will be people that speak into you. And if you part for them, you ain't going to be successful unless you're around them or with them. That's a lie from the pit of hell. You must be where the Lord appointed you until he moves you. But that's still the Lord. No man has, is, has your destiny in their hand. And no matter who yielded as a vessel to speak to you because they happen to be yielded at that time for him to move in that moment through them to speak to you, that word is still from God to you no matter where you go, whether you ever see them people again, whether you with them for a season and the Lord separates you, don't you let go of that word because it was from God. Don't, don't attach that word to the person. I'm watching many of you do this. I'm perceiving some of you are doing this. You must be intimate with the Lord. Let him into every chamber. His pleasure with you is all that matters. I'm watching people. They keep you small so that they see big. They isolate you. Because I watch people. They got these people that's grumbling and groveling. And, and if you ain't like that all the time, oh, the attention, the attention, give me attention. They, they, they single you out as if you think you're better because you're not begging and groveling. Beloved, keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep the integrity that he gave you in your heart and, and you go before him. You ain't got to go before people. Get on your knees before him and say, Lord, help me not to think of myself more highly than I ought to. Remove every unclean thought out of me, Father God. Sanctify me wholly by your word and by your truth. Search me and know my thoughts. Try me and know my heart. Speak to him about the tale. Keep me from hidden sin, secret sin, and secret thoughts. Forgive me for the thoughts of my heart. Wash me. You ain't got to do that to people. Do that to the Lord. And stay in that posture. But when he tells you to get up and be bold, you must get in that posture. Because he desires to not only change your position, he desires to teach you to effectively change your artillery. For you are a warrior. You are an ambassador. No matter what title you have, you have all have the title of an ambassador in this earth. Okay, beloved? The message I just finished delivering, the one new man trying those who say they are Jews and are not, I speak of the spiritual things. We're talking about the, the, the Jews of the Spirit. I don't, if you got any unsaved relatives, if you got anyone doing the faith, if you got anyone who is a babe in Christ, even you, listen to it an hour and 35 minutes, and I will not. I'm loading it all up. Now I'm going to cut it into two halves for other things because some things won't let me load stuff up that big. Uh, and, I, and I might still do a part one and part two just because it's easier for some people. But the whole one is going to be loaded up too. Make no mistake about that. Okay? Uh, you don't want to miss that message. But this is an encouraging word. I got a couple of them. I don't know if I'm going to do the land prophets, the earth scout prophets. I'm going to do both. But I'm going to do the one. Uh, I didn't blow this up. Lord, help me. Because that last message, uh, hey, I had to let the spirit have its way. Okay? This message, beloved, the spiritual vultures that come to steal your sacrifice. The spiritual vultures that come to steal your sacrifice, they anticipate your death. But God, the spiritual vultures that come to steal your sacrifice, 
They anticipate your death. But God, I'm going to read this scripture. I'm going to give you this revelation out of this, okay? I don't know what minister I heard speaking. And he read this scripture and something just triggered in me. He was going on, but I was locked in on this scripture. And that's how I know the Lord lifted up for me and then gave me a message. The same thing happened as I minister as people listen. He will light something up for you and begin to speak and give you something completely different. Okay? Genesis 15, 9 through 12. And he said unto him, read this whole 15. This is about the covenant that he made. This was the, the night where he, where the Lord came down as a pillar and as a, a cloud. And he crossed, he put Abraham in a deep sleep and he crossed for him because Abraham couldn't keep this. They separated the animals into two because the covenant was as if anyone break this covenant, that they should be spread apart like this. Literally cut in half and spread apart like these animals. And he made that covenant that he, you know, the promises that he made to Abraham uh, about how he would make him a nation and his seed would be as multiplied as the uh, sand of the sea and look to the stars. This covenant, okay, the covenant that you have now, okay. I want you to catch this. But I'm speaking spiritual sacrifices, okay? So I want you to catch this. This was a physical thing then, but it's a spiritual thing for us. And the spiritual, the message you're giving me now concerning this is spiritual, okay? And he said unto him, read the whole of 15 on your own so you can understand all this. The, the wholeness of it, but I, I'm delivering a, a, a revelatory message on this, okay? And he said unto him, take me an heifer of three years old. I know it's the reason it's three years old, but I still, of course, because my mind started dissecting stuff, okay? And a she-goat of three years old. A heifer and a she-goat of three years old. And a ram of three years old. Each one of them are three years old. And then a turtle dove. And a young pigeon. I already know if you can give me a message just because I can't stay out of it. And he took unto him all these. He was him, Abraham. Excuse me. And divided them in the midst, right down the midst, down a half, and laid each piece one side against another. But the birds he divided night. So he cut the, the heifer of three years old, the she goat of three years old, and the ram. He cut them in half, and he, 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 he laid the halves next to each other. Like, you know, like this, because they were able to walk through them, okay? Eleven. And when the fowls, this is the point. And then... And when the fowls came down up on the carcasses, Abraham drove them away. The fowls came down. Fowls are vultures. You got to break this word down. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abraham. And lo, and a horror, a great darkness fell upon him. Okay? Note, the story is where the Lord came down to pass between the pieces. This is when the covenant was made. You have to, that's why I need you to read that whole thing on your own. Okay? <clears throat> Because this covenant is very important. But I want you to key in on verse 11. That after he laid down his sacrifice. After he laid down the sacrifices. The fowls. The vultures came down upon the carcasses to devour them. And Abraham drove them away. Okay. I'm going to read this in the voice. The eternal one. Bring to me the fallen three year old cow. A three year old female goat. A three year old ram. A turtle dove and a young pigeon. Abraham brought. Uh, God, all these animals and cut them in two, lay each half next to the other, making two rows, two rows, not touching, two rows. Only the birds were not cut in two. And when any birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, Abraham swatted them away. I'm going to get in the message so you can get what I'm saying. God said, bring to me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each of three years old. And a dove and a young pigeon. Verse 10 through 12. He brought all these animals to him. He split them down the middle. And laid the halves opposite of each other. But he didn't split the birds. Vultures swooped down on the carcasses. But Abraham scared them off. The sun went down and the deep sleep overcame Abraham. Then a sense of dread and darkness. I want you to read this whole thing on your own time. Because I want you to read the covenant that he made with him. Okay, but I'm sticking to this message, okay? That when they laid their sacrifice down, the vultures sought to come and steal the sacrifice. We know now that our altar is our heart. 
And we know our sacrifice is our worship. Our sacrifice is, is our joy. Our thank you, Lord. Our steadfastness. Our integrity. Our conversation. Our belief. Our faith. Our lifting of our hands. Our kneeling in prayer. Our prayer for others. Our living for Christ is our sacrifice now. So as you lay your sacrifice as the Lord. To the Lord. The vultures, the vultures of this world, those who say they are Jews and are not, those who say they are brethren, those who are of the world, those who hate your righteousness and your straight way of living, come to steal your sacrifice unto the Lord, that you will not receive the benefits of your sacrifice. They come to rob your joy, which is your sacrifice. They come to take your praise, which is your sacrifice. They come to eat up your time so that you will serve, which is your sacrifice. They come to talk on the phone and gossip so that you don't pray. They want to take you out to eat when you want to fast. They come to steal your sacrifice that you do not reap the benefits thereof. Okay? Let me keep going. I'm going to get to I'm gonna bring this on home. This is a short message because I want you to understand this is the time. Those, the spiritual vultures are seeking to steal your sacrifice. Why? For they anticipate your death. Have I got to that scripture? Yeah, no, 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 that's just a that was just revelation in the scripture. For vultures circle, vultures gather when they anticipate death. Vultures gather when they anticipate death. Whether you someone who trusted in someone and you was telling them a little bit what's going on in your life, believing you were gonna receive support. But instead, you must have been doing something wrong. You must have been this, you must they anticipate your death. When it looks like you're fighting because you're fighting the good fight of faith. Your fire is not their fight. And woe unto you who don't understand the prophetic. Woe unto you who attempt to understand someone else's process. Instead of saying that they're being tried by fire that they be perfected. You judge if they've done something wrong. You judge if they're being punished. You judge if they're getting what they sold out. Because many people are reaping things they did not sow. There are many people are drinking of a cup for you. Many people are suffering undeserving things because they cried out for you. This is the cup. So these vultures not only come while you're going through, you lifting your hands and saying, Lord, I, the, 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 many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver us out of them all. Thank for you who called us who are so good. You have begun this good work in us and you will continue to the day of Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Though the enemies in camp round about me to eat up my flesh, the Lord is my deliverer. When you're giving your sacrifice, you got these vultures that are anticipating your death. They're actually anticipating seeing you fall. Anticipating seeing you fail. You put out the pictures of the house. They're anticipating you won't get that house. You're speaking of what the Lord did with your business and how he moved it. They're anticipating the fail of that business. You're speaking about the things the Lord has given you in creativity. They're anticipating the door being closing your face. They anticipate your death for they seek to steal the sacrifice that you have sent up to your Lord. And meanwhile, they are anticipating your death, which is why they gather. Many of you think when, when, when you start to share some of the things the Lord is doing, people start coming around you suddenly, you think it's people coming around for support. When actually it's the vultures that are circling you anticipating your death. Catch that! Many of you are going to start to shut things. You start to shut some of the things the Lord is doing that's starting to manifest. And all of a sudden, people that wouldn't talk to you start coming around. And you think it's to celebrate you. But it's the vultures that are encircling you. They are circling you, anticipating your death. But instead, they're going to see you rise like a phoenix. Instead, they're going to see you rise out of the ashes. Instead, they're going to see you mount up with wings like an eagle. Instead, they're going to see you rise like an edifice. <laughs> Though they have gathered in anticipation of your death, the spiritual vultures who come to devour your sacrifice, your thanksgiving, your praise, your gratefulness, your godliness with contentment, your holy conversation, your chaste conversation, your submissiveness to your husband, they come to devour your sacrifice. Oh, but they're going to see the hospital. He's going to raise you up before the eyes of your enemy and set a table for you in the presence of them. Mm. A table is not only for eating but display. I heard you, Lord. A table is not only for eating but display. <laughs> He's going to prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemy. A table is not only for eating but display. You're going to be put on a holy display. 
holy evidence, holy proof, holy glory. Though they have gathered because they anticipate your death. The spiritual vultures that come to devour your sacrifice. Keep praising the Lord. Keep singing unto the Lord. Keep living holy. Keep bowing in Igma before him. Keep yourself prostrate in your heart. Stay in your boldness. Stay in your faith. Keep sharing what you hope to see. For the Lord is pleased in this faith. Because if you could see it, why didn't you then get hope for it? Nothing's too hard for him to do. What would you believe him for? Or as he spoke to me and my husband, what would you build? Anything you build shall manifest. Master builders. Mm, let me keep going. Get back into scripture. Okay, I already read that. There are birds that gather in anticipation of your death. Okay? There are large birds. I want you to look at the definition of this. I thought that was so funny. They gather. And some of this is going to be your family members. I want you to catch this. A large bird of prey with the head and neck more or less bare of feathers, feeding chiefly, bald. In the spirit, they bald. And in the spirit, you got some glorious flow. Okay? They are reputed. They gather with others in anticipation of death. In anticipation of sick or injured animals or persons. They gather because they think you're on your way out. They gather because they think you're going to fall and not rise again. They gather because they think you're going to have your dreams dashed. They think they gather because they think everything you prophesy is going to fail. They gather because those that you have you have made open what you believe in the Lord for, and they gather in anticipation to watch you not receive it. They gather in anticipation of your death or death of a dream, death of a vision, death of a hope, death of the faith you placed in the Lord. But that's not what they're going to see. Okay? Next definition of a vulture. A contemptible person who prays or exploits others. Hello? They are related. I want you to catch this. Catch this in the spirit. These are vultures. They are related. The vultures are related to hawks and eagles and falcons. But they are weaker in claws, and their head is bald, and they subsist chiefly or entirely on carrion. They scavenge. They are related to the hawks, majestic birds. They are related to the eagles. Oh, yes, we the eagles. These are some of your family members. They're going to gather in anticipation of your death. And falcons. But they are weaker claws, and they are bald in the spirit and, subs and subsist chiefly or entirely on carry on. They are some scavengers. So if they ain't going to watch your death, don't think they won't remain around to get some scraps. So if they don't get to see you die, even if you've lost some things, if they don't get to see you die, they will stand around in anticipation of the scraps you leave. So either they're going to feed on uh, feed on your, your death or on your scraps. They want to see you fall. And how do they feed on that girl? You know, she's she, she, she showing the pictures of the house. I don't see him in that house. You know, well, they, they lost the house they got. <laughs> it's not what they're going to see, though, okay? They are a rap uh, rapacious or a predatory person. They are predatory. Okay? This message... Shorten to the point. The spiritual vultures, they come to steal your sacrifice. For they anticipate your death. But God, what is your sacrifice? Your joy, your worship, your belief, your patience, your praise, your obedience, your temperance, your faithfulness, your order, your holy conversation. Your worship, your singing, your house in order. They come to devour your time. Convert and pervert your thoughts. The vultures that spiritually come to devour the sacrifice. Those who gather in anticipation of your death. Those who gather to receive what you may leave behind as scraps. Not in sincerity of heart. For they came for the anticipate your fall. But that's not what they will see. 
Okay? This little message is short and to the point. Now I'm going to leave a call with the scripture here. For those of you, this is the time. Pay attention to who you allow around you and why. Because there are vultures surrounding in anticipation of your death. But they first come to devour your sacrifice. And then they anticipate your death. Your fall, your failure, your loss of faith, your backsliding, your fall. Your, they want to see you completely go the other way. They want to see everything you believe the Lord for fall. But instead, they're going to see a rising. You take this word in the name of Jesus Christ. Instead, they're going to see your rise. Those who have anticipated your fall. Those who have drawn a sword out against you that will return it to their own heart. Those who have spoken and gnashed up on you or with their teeth in private shall be made manifest for them. He will deliver you from the expectation of your enemies. For they gathered for they anticipate a death. They gathered to steal your sacrifice of time, of praise, of worship, of fasting, of decency and of order, of joy, of faith, of patience. And who he called you to be. Take the word spoken over you. And even this word. And war a good warfare with it. Hold on to it. No matter what is spoken. For he will break the teeth of the ungodly. Isaiah 61 and 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God. For he had clothed me. You are clothed. With the garments of salvation. He had covered me with the robe of righteousness. You are covered with the robe. You are uh, clothed with salvation. And you are covered with the robe of uh, righteousness. As a bridegroom decketh himself. With ornaments. And a bride. He adorned herself with jewels. You are decked out in the spirit. And they are about, it's about to be made manifest. Okay. The ornaments of a meek and quiet spirit. But let it be the hidden man of the heart. This is 1 Peter 3 and 4. And that which is not corruptible, you're not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, that's a spirit that is rested in him, that is also a sacrifice, which is the sight, which is in the sight of God a great price. That is a great price. Godliness with contentment is much gain, and that's a sacrifice. For you to continue to wait up on the Lord, you renew your strength. You shall mount up on wings like eagles and soar. You shall run and not go weary. You shall walk and not faint. That is your sacrifice. Though those who are related to you, the hawk, the eagle, and the falcon, yet they bold and weaker and they scatter. Okay? Apply the whole arm of God with this word and go forth with it, beloved. This is a right now word. This is a prophetic word in the name of Jesus Christ. Behold, the people that are around you that are vultures, that attempt to steal your sacrifice that you've laid out. And in doing that, they anticipate your death as they gather to watch what they think will fail when in all these years in faith you believe for. But instead, that table is going to be prepared before your enemy. And as the Spirit just said to me, a table ain't just for eating, it's for display. <laughs> be, per, be prepared to put on, be put on display. But not a display of shame, a display of glory and manifestation and evidence magnifying and glorifying your God. Beloved, that's the end of this word. Grace be with you, and I love you all. Did you know that when you hit thumbs up, you enable more to be fed by the very message that just fed you? So share the spiritual meal, feed others, work a righteous work, work at evangelism by working the thumb. Thumbs up, feed more. Thumbs up, feed more. So into the good ground of preach be a voice, not an echo, yet only as you have purposed in your heart. For God loves a cheerful giver. The truth, the truth of the word of God. Of the word of God.
1 Corinthians 9.11 reads, If we have sown into your spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your carnal things? Give only with purpose and cheer, for we desire fruit that will abound towards your account. We thank you for all of your support, seed of your time, seed of your prayers, and the purpose seed of your gifts. To give, visit our YouTube channel and click on the PayPal logo or go directly to PayPal using the following links or email preachbvne at yahoo.com. To listen to more messages and for the latest updates and offers, visit www.preachbvne.webs.com. Also view messages on the YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash preach be a voice, not an echo ministry. Also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Do the work of an evangelist. Watch it, then share it. Beloved, we wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Grace be with you. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you.